So like I said, my topic this morning is victory dance. Victory dance is a celebration of God's grace and mercy. A celebration of God's grace and mercy. That means if God has shown you grace, if God has been gracious to you, God has been merciful to you, there is a time when you arise to recognize that and give him quality praise, singing, dancing, and praising him for the much grace he has shown you and released to you, for the much mercy you have received from him. Victory dance is a celebration of God's benevolence and supernatural provision and assistance. If God has ever assisted you, if God has ever opened the door and caused money to come, blessings to come, when you needed money, money came. You, had, you needed money to pay your rent. You needed money to finance a project. You needed money to pay your school fees. You needed money to do one or two things. And you really didn't know how that money will come and you look to god in prayer and god supernaturally provided and when you look at your business you see how god is blessing the business how god is prospering you at work how god is favoring you at work you know that this cannot be but god and god alone not your smartness not your intelligence not the fact that you are pretty and beautiful or handsome and you know how to speak and you know how to have your way and all that no the Bible said the race is not to the sweet, not the battle to the strong. So you can be strong and not win the battle. Goliath was a strong man, but little David, young David, was the one who killed him. Chopped off his head. A man who had never used a sword in his life was the one who chopped off his head. Imagine that. So if you were to be for the strong, David does not start the chance. That was why the man was angry. Say, I come to you as a soldier and you are coming to me with sticks. Am I a dog? You know, was, he was expecting a man who will come and then they will show their skills in how to use the sword, how to use the shield and all that. But he didn't see that. One stone brought him down before he could get close to David to use that sword. So you can be a fast runner. You may win a race in Nigeria and lose when you meet Ghana. Am I correct? You can be the champion yesterday and the next day when you come to a race, they win you. That's why they say the man is a record holder. But the next five races he will do, he is not able to you know, clock the same time that he clocked that made him the, the record holder. But one day will come again, he will beat that time. Or some other person will come and beat that time. So you can be a fast person, very fast in running, but you may not win the race. And the Bible says time and chance happen to them all. That means there is a supernatural being who is in control of all things. He creates the chance which will call opportunities. And when the time is ripe, he opens the door, makes it happen. So when you recognize this, you see that this is God who is showing me mercy. This is God who is providing for me. This is God who is prospering me in my work, in my career, and making sure that I have plenty of money to spend. And so you go into praises, dancing and rejoicing. That's what we call victory dance. A celebration of God's uh, benevolence and supernatural provision and assistance when you recognize what he has done. And that's why the Bible tells us that he who offers thank offering honors me. What does that word honestly mean? He recognizes the role that I have played. He recognizes the, what I have done for him and he comes to give thanks. Victory dance is a celebration of God's goodness, kindness, powerful and everlasting love and care. A love that does not wane, does not go down. A love that is constant. A love that will never end. It is called everlasting love. That means as long as God lives, he loves you. He will never stop loving you. Even when you are not living right, his love for you is always the same. He hates what you're doing wrong, but he loves you as a person. 
That's why he will go any length to try to convince you that you are wrong. He will do everything he can to bring you to a point where you will have to repent and change your ways. And any time you say, Lord, I am sorry, he is quick to embrace you even when you are still feeling guilty for what you have done. He tells you, don't worry, my son, you are forgiven. So when we are celebrating and singing and praising God and rejoicing, we are doing what? We are celebrating God's goodness. We are saying, God, you are good. We are celebrating his kindness. We see how many times he comes to help us. We are celebrating his powerful and everlasting love. His care for us, how he takes care of us, how he meets our needs, how he solves our problems. How he comforts us in time of distress. You come to church like this and you are shocked. It's like the pastor is speaking only to you. How did the pastor know this? Because God knows you and he has put the words in his mouth so he can address your case. That's love. Victory dance is a celebration of God's protection and great deliverance in time of crisis. And challenge. You are celebrating the protection that you have received. How many times have you been in a journey and you almost had an accident? All you could do was Jesus, Jesus. And before you know what's happening, everything changed. How it all changed, you cannot explain. Sometimes your heart wants to jump out of your body because you are scared you are going to fall from that bike. This will happen, that will happen, and God protects you. Do you know how many people you have passed through who are not really human beings? No, some of you don't understand what God does for you. I knew a lady, I said it before in this church, who was living with a man, they were not married, they had two children, and the man was already a dead man somewhere in this town. One day the man just left. He didn't see the man for a long time. So he's been searching. Search, she's been just searching for the man. Couldn't find. So he decided to go to the hometown of the man as described. Probably the man is there to go and look for him. So when he was asking about the man, he said, who are you talking about? He mentioned the name. He said, no, you cannot be serious. He said, no. He, gave me, he told me that it's from this place. Blah, 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 blah. Praise God. So... By the time this, you know, she showed some seriousness and now took, said, this is the grave of the man you're talking about. It's not possible for the man to be alive. I said, but I have two children for him now. You don't know what God protects you from. Somebody whose eyes was open and he said a lot of things. He said, look, you don't know the people you're buying from or those who are selling to you. You don't see them in the spirit. If God opens your eyes, you won't even go to the market anymore to buy. You don't know things. You know, if one day God opens your eyes with the person sitting by your side. He said, lie, lie. If you see the person coming from that place, you will take another direction. We need to celebrate God's protection. God's protection. Somebody said he went to the market. It's so many people, they were walking upside down. They use their hands to walk, but you see them as walking with their legs. Somebody at Asaba, when I was there, they told me the story. He went to buy fufu, you know fufu? Santana, according to many people. Six to six. The thing has got many nicknames. You eat it in the morning, it will carry you through to six in the evening. <laughs> Praise God. It is very heavy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. So he bought the thing, so the guy decided to pray as usual before eating. So I covered the food with the blood of Jesus. He shouted, you want to kill me? The apple spoke with human voice. He was like, was I dreaming? He prayed again, he just shouted, do you want to kill me? So assuming the guy just took the thing, bam, you know, without praying like we used to, we're very hungry, boom, throw into the stomach. What was he throwing into the stomach Problem. You don't know what God protects you from. So when you are alive, you do what? You praise him. You have reason to thank him. A woman went to the hospital. She had ordinary fever. From fever, they say it's malaria. From malaria, I entered jaundice. From jaundice, she couldn't walk anymore. She was not transferred from the clinic. They went to a bobby. They hung her leg, her legs, hung the leg up like this for one solid month. By the time she came back, she was learning how to walk. 
She has to change her bed from normal bed to orthopedic foam. With a lot of prayer and fasting, she'll survive. What about you, your kids? You think you have problems. You don't have problems. You need to hear other people's story. That's before you start talking. God is protecting you. God is providing for you. God is helping you. You may not have seen millions. You may not have you know, received all the things you listed you want to receive. But at least you know you are still alive. You are healthy. You walk with your legs and your hands. You buy from all kinds of people. You know, sell to all kinds of people. Interact with all kinds of people. You have embraced all kinds of people. You don't even know those wanted to plant things in you. But God made it not to work. You don't know those who fear you because they have tried you severally and they didn't succeed. God doesn't have to tell you everything. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Oh, I've seen things, I've experienced things, I've experienced attacks. You think you are the one that gets attacked? No, it's the pastors. It's the pastors that receive more. So I know I'm safe, I know I'm protected. I know I cannot die. That's how I came to love that scripture. I shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me. That's my security. If you like, say that's my juju. My confidence in that promise of God that he would take care of me. So every day, if you see me still talking, it's because God protected me. If you are still talking, it's because God protected you. The fact that you're sitting in this room this morning listening to me, it means that God is your protection. And we have every reason to do what? Sing, praise, and dance, and rejoice that we are still alive. <laughs> Maybe by now you should have gone bankrupt completely. Who knows what the enemy planned? Probably he wanted you to be a beggar on the streets, but you are not a beggar. and You will never be a beggar in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hasn't he been protecting you? Your children are still alive. God is taking care of you. God is pro prospering you. God is helping you. Yes, someone will say, Pastor, my life has been a bitter story, man. If I tell you the story of my life, you will not be saying this thing you are saying. But how did you come through? Is it by your power? Who pulled you through? You are still alive. Maybe they wanted you dead, but you are still alive. Maybe they wanted you paralyzed because when you think, 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 you will develop a high blood pressure or have stroke, but you are still alive. There's someone here who experienced stroke, but if she doesn't tell you, you will not know, except you were around that time. You won't know. God protects, God heals, God delivers. Let me not say some things. I don't like sharing too many testimonies so that they won't say pastor is bragging, but I can tell you God works in this church. <laughs> a young girl, I've never heard that a young girl who is not up to 30 years can have stroke, but we saw it here. And God delivered. Who protected her? God. Who is protecting you? So when we talk of victory, that's what are we saying? We're celebrating the protection of God. We're celebrating the, the deliverance that God gives us. In time of crisis, you have been through a lot, but God delivered you. Each time the enemy rises, God stands up for you. God defends you. God delivers you. Be grateful. Praise him. Pastor, I'm still on medication. I understand, but you could have been dead too. There are people who took medications, they died. Yours is not the case. So is he protecting you? Yes. Is he showing you favor? Yes. Victory dance is a thanksgiving and praise party for answered prayers. A thanksgiving and praise party for answered prayers. We are here to dance this morning. If you never, if your shoe no go let you go pull and win that time reach. You will pull it. You will dance and praise God for prayers you have prayed. This is very quick. We are very, very, very quick in praying. Very fast. Every day we are shooting prayers. As we are going on the road, we are praying. As we are walking, we are praying. Even when we are taking our baths, we are praying. Am I correct? Constantly asking for one thing or the other. The list is endless. 
So when we are celebrating, what are we doing? We are thanking him for all the prayers. Sometimes you can't even remember all the prayers you pray in a day. But God is always answering. Never tired of hearing you. Never tired of answering you. Very faithful father. So we thank him for that. We have got some requests on the altar. And today we are going to praise him for it. Amen? Amen. Now, victory dance can be done and is usually done in such a way that you are able to you know, express yourself. Show God that you really you are happy with him. You are excited about what he has done. So, you, you, you don't look at people and watch them how they are doing it and be laughing as they are. No, you are busy, too busy praising him. Too busy celebrating what he has done. In other words, you cannot be praising God and be absent-minded. Did you hear what I just said? You can't be praising God and be absent-minded. Those who look, who look at others and laugh and smile and watch their dancing steps, they are not serious. Because if you are serious, you will not be watching other people. You are thinking about what God has done and you are busy praising. I'm going to show you a few scriptures that we're going to read together so that you can get the picture of what I am saying. Now, it is more difficult to praise God when situation has not changed. It is easier to praise God when prayers have been answered and the answers have been received. Am I correct? The money has come. Ha! I thank God. Oh. They just promoted you. Oh, praise the Lord. See my ring, 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 see my ring. You see, you are excited. I'm engaged. The thing has happened. I am not working. I just received my first salary. What am I saying? When the answer has manifested, it's easier to do what? Jump and dance and praise God. You can roll from one end of the altar to the other end. Because you have seen the answer. But when the answer has not manifested, victory dance is very difficult. For some of you few here today, yours may be the answer is already in your hand. So you, you know, it's very going to be very easy for you to praise him and dance. Amen? But for some people, it's going to be a struggle. But don't worry. Start in the flesh. Very soon you will end in the spirit. You still need to praise him anyhow. Why are we praising him? Because we know he can't let us down. Why are we dancing and rejoicing when the thing has not changed? When the situation seems worse than before? When I started to talk to God. Because I know, I know, even though it gets worse, I'm still going to come out alive. When they sent for Jesus to come for Lazarus, Lazarus was still alive. Even though he was like he was going to die. For a sickness that will make them to send for him, it was a very serious sickness. But yet, he, when he arrived, the man was already buried. He still came back to life. That is to say, anytime God will show up, God won't disappoint. God won't let you down. I said God will not let you down. This year, he will not let you down. He will honor you. He will answer you in the name of Jesus. The breakthrough you seek will reach your hand. Believe me, God is faithful. It's difficult to praise him when the business is not moving on. But when the business, everything is already done, wow, praising God is very easy. <laughs> very easy. But you know what? The praise dance that you're doing, the singing, the worship that you're giving to God in the time of difficulty and great challenge, when situations have not changed, that is more powerful. More powerful because God appreciates it more. Because you are showing God, I truly believe in you. I have confidence in you. God values it more and God rewards it more. So don't wait till the answer comes. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voices. Praise him anyhow. Dance to the, you know, the sound of music. And let God be God in your life. Amen, somebody. Exodus chapter 15. I want to read from verse 1 to 21. These are stories, accounts in the Bible. I'm going to be reading them. I won't be talking much about them, but just reading them. And I want you to please 
pay attention because these are praise parties that they had when God answered. And then the praise that they did when the answer has not come. And how God appreciated and responded. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he has he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hauled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. I will praise him. My father's God. And I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Wow. Why did they call him a warrior? Because he, he dealt with the people of uh, Egypt. And they have just crossed the Red Sea. He, they saw how God mightily dealt with Egypt. Punished Egypt. Showing his power. And then drowning the soldiers in the Red Sea. The Lord is his name, verse 4. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hauled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. All in the, in the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like, like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, walking wonders? He will stretch out your right hand and the earth swallow them up. Swallow them. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The, the, the chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will, will, will be seized with trembling. The peoples of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them. By the power of your of, of your arm, they will, they will be as still as stone until your people pass by, O Lord. Until the people you brought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, O Lord, you have made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, your hands established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. When Pharaoh's horses chariots and horsemen went into the sea. The Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider he has hauled into the sea. All that we were reading before was Moses' song. Moses sang that song to praise God in the midst of his people. And Miriam began to echo it. The women joining her with tambourine, they were singing and they were praising God. What were they doing? They were appreciating God for the great deliverance because it was like a dream. They never thought that it can happen that way. But God sent Moses, one man, the first time Moses appeared, they didn't believe him. When they finally believed because of the signs that he performed. Now, Moses entered the presence of Pharaoh. Pharaoh who said to him, say, who is the Lord? I don't know him. Get away from here. You guys are lazy. That's why you're talking of going. He multiplied their pain. The people said, ah, Moses, you have brought a curse on us. You have put sword in the hand of Pharaoh to kill us. All this why it was better off. It was better you, not, you have not come because we have not seen any deliverance but punishment. Moses went back to God and said, Lord, did you bring me here to increase your suffering? Because I, you have not delivered them at all. God said, wait. I will harden his heart more, but I will show him my power. The man said, I need an introduction. I don't know the Lord. Who is he? Then God began to introduce himself. One plague after another. One plague after another. Until their firstborn 
died. And then they say, all of you go. After they have gone, they talk to themselves. What have we done? Who will build our cities? Who will do our farm work? Who is going to do this? Who is going to do this? The slaves are gone. Then who is going to serve us? Let's go. Their best men all gathered together and God was responsible because God wanted to teach them a final lesson. Pharaoh was also wise. He stayed back and asked them to pursue. They all drowned in the sea. The man opened his mouth to watch the whole thing happen and turned back. He now knew who the Lord was. So if you ask him, who is the Lord, God of Israel, he will tell you. So they saw all this. Have you ever seen a river divide before? They witnessed it with their own eyes. How can you not praise God for such a thing? They saw the enemies drown in the sea. By the time they were living, they were richer than what they were when they, when they came to Egypt. Because God said, you are not going to get empty handed. You have suffered a lot. So collect from the people anything you ask for. Gold or silver. So anything your madam wore the other day you like, you know, the jewelry and everything. He said, madam, that one you wore when you went to see the Pharaoh, that's the one I want. Give it to me. He said, take, go, 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 go. What else do you want? He said, I want your gold pot. I want this one. I want gold cup. I want gold plate. I want gold spoon. They collected everything and gathered. Oh, it was a big load. So they couldn't climb the mountain with that kind of a thing. So the only way they could go is through the flat land. And that leads to the sea. So how are they going to cross? But God parted the water for them. And they cross. And of course, you know, nobody wants to go. The water is hanging like this. Water is hanging like this. Who is going to go? So what did God do? He caused the Egyptians to pursue. So the sound of horses that was coming from afar was a motivating force. Nobody wants to die. So nobody was thinking about the water collapsing anymore. So everybody started to push. And then they carried all their luggage and passed through. And funny enough, the ground was dry. There was no water. So the horses, the chariots can move freely. The animals can move freely. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But when the Egyptians pursued, everything changed. They said the Lord is fighting against us. To turn back, they could not turn back. So that's all. All of them drowned. Put your hands together for the Lord. So if it was you, would you not celebrate such a deliverance? Many of us don't even celebrate deliverance. You have been tormented by marine spirits. They pray for you and the whole thing stop. Even ordinary thanksgiving to say, Lord, I thank you for delivering me. You can't open your mouth. Some people who have spent money, gone to various places to try to end their problem. I remember one lady, pretty woman, but she had to sleep with the native doctor she went to for help in order to conceive. The lady don't say you must sleep with me. That's how you opened your womb. After the sleep in Inca, she still did not conceive. So when people are subjected to all kinds of things, some people will not talk. They will just, you know, they, they know you know where you have been, you know what, what it has been like. But after you come to Christ and God delivers you, all that problem goes away. To open your mouth and praise God for such a deliverance is a big problem. You didn't pay money for it. He came to you free. The pastor didn't charge you. You didn't buy him a gift after that. You didn't give him money after that. But to praise God is a problem. Look. There are things that God does for you. You cannot but do what? Celebrate. Celebrating is not call your friends. Let us eat and that. I mean, you will be jumping and dancing. See, that was what they were doing. They were all of them celebrating, jubilating, singing and dancing and praising God that they are now out of bondage. God defeated the enemy and brought them out. And what seemed impossible in the eyes of man has now become possible. Praise the Lord, brethren. Second Chronicles chapter twenty. I want to read from verse 20 to 23. Early in the morning, they led for the desert of Tekoa as they set out. Jerusalem stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord, your God, and you'll be upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord. 
for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mansia who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mansia to destroy and annihilate them. After they, you know, finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Now, Ammon, Moab and Mansia, Mansia mean the Edomites, the children of uh, Esau. Ammon and Moab are the children of uh, Lot, Abraham's relative. You know Esau, the twin brother of Jacob, Israel. Now, they came together to fight against Judah. And Judah was only two tribes, Judah and Ephraim. Small number. Three nations, big nations. What will we do? They cried to God, entered into fasting. They fasted, they prayed, like we've been fasting and praying. And God spoke and said, don't worry, everything is taken care of. Just as God spoke, that, behold, I am doing a new thing this year. You still remember? So what did the king do? The king told them, look, believe God's prophet. Believe the word of the Lord. Everything is going to be okay. So he consulted with the leaders, and they decided that the best way to show God that we believe, since God said we are not going to fight, is to appoint praise singers to be in front. So the praise singers were singing. So the whole army was singing, and they were praising the Lord. Praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. Praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. They were chanting, they were singing, they were dancing, they were making music as they were going. And the Bible said that when they began to do that, the Lord set confusion into the um, in, in midst of the soldiers that gather against them. Two nations against one. Then uh, language, you know, relationship thing came in. Ammon and Moab were the same. We turned and killed the other people, the children of Esau. Then after they finished, then they start to fight against each other. Only God knows what caused the quarrel. Before you know what was happening, everybody was dead. By the time they arrived, not one soul was alive. It took three days to collect all the things that the people left behind. The Lord will set ambush in the camp of your enemy. Amen. I said the Lord will set ambush in the camp of your enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. All you need to do is praise him. Now look at the scenario here. The soldiers are still gathering against them. They did not disperse after God spoke. They were still there. So it appears as if God has done nothing. And indeed, according to this story, God did not do anything until they took action. What was their action? To praise God in faith. That the victory is already won. That God has done what he said. That the enemy will be defeated without them fighting. That was what they were praising God for. That God would defeat the enemy without them fighting. He, that was what they were praising God for. And when they started to do the praise and the dance, that was when God now set ambush against the enemy. So in some situations, God will not arise until we start to praise him. So what is your praise? Your praise is an act of faith. Your praise is a demonstration of confidence in God. Your praise is, you are telling God through your praise, I believe you. I trust you. You have given your word. Your word will not fail. You are my case. You will give me victory. I thank you because you have done. I thank you because you have answered. I thank you because you are moving now. You are working for me. That's what it's all about. So praise him. Praise him for the job. You've been asking, say, Lord, I thank you for my job. Don't ask anymore from today. Start praising God. When you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, I praise you and thank you for my job. I take delivery of my employment in the name of Jesus. You are trusting God for baby. Say, Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I worship you. Even though I saw my period yesterday, I thank you, Lord, because my baby is already in my womb. You have answered me. Every day you give him praise. You worship him. Because he has answered. You are believing God for promotion. You start to thank God for the promotion. Even though you have not seen the letter of promotion yet. You are trusting God for a car. You are trusting God for land of your own. You are trusting God to finance your project. You start to thank God for the money. You are trusting God for your business. A business of your own. You start to praise God for it. Whatever you are believing God for that you ask God. Just begin to rejoice and praise him for doing it. Even though it hasn't happened yet. By the time they got there, what did they see? Your miracle must reach you. <laughs> I said your miracle must reach you. They saw all the soldiers dead. Second Samuel, quickly. 
chapter 6, verse 12 to 19. Now, this is another testimony of a great thing that God did. You know, remember when, uh, when, when uh, David wanted to bring in the ark the first time, there was a, an error in the way they did it. The Lord said you must carry the ark on poles. Four men will have to carry it, and these men must be Levites who have sanctified themselves. One person will hold one end. The other person will hold one end. That's how you carry. So you use two poles, four men carrying it. But they put it on a cart. And because the road is not a paved and smooth road, the thing stumbles. It looks as if the thing wants to fall. So the son of the man who's, in whose house the ark has been all this while put his hand to stop it from falling, thinking he's helping God. God killed him instantly. He died. And David said, if God is angry and kills someone, then I can't have the ark now. Send it back. So they took it to Obedidom's house, another person. And in the space of three months, God started to bless the man. And David decided to bring the ark in again. And so he was excited that this time around, they researched and they got it right. And nobody died. So by the time the ark got to Jerusalem, come and see praise. <laughs> praise God. Can we read it now? From verse 12. Now King David was told... The Lord has blessed the household of Obedidom and everything he has, he has because, the ark, because of the ark of God. So David went down and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. David wearing a leaning effort danced before the Lord with all his might. That's how you praise God. That's what we call praise, you know, victory dance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? With what? With what? Not the one you sound like this. Others are singing, you are doing like this. Praise the Lord, single, single. Praise the Lord. No. He danced with all his might, verse 15. Why he and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when he saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israel, of Israelites. Both men and women and all the people went to their homes. You see, he was excited. God wasn't angry anymore. God is happy with the people. So the man was so, so honored that the ark of God is coming into town. And they began to dance. The guy was dancing with all his might and throwing his leg up. I don't know, maybe one of those times he was throwing his leg. The lady saw the whatever is inside. And so he said, seek out what the king is doing and disgracing himself before the people. That's what his wife said. And the man was, he told, told her off. He said, look, it, I'm dancing before the God who chose me before your family. Who decided to remove the kingship from your house and give it to me. Why would I not praise him? I am going to even be more dishonorable before them as long as it is called praising God. So when you are praising God, you don't care who, are, who is around because you know why you are doing it. You know what he has done. You don't look at people's face. You don't look at what they will say, what they will do. You see, he, hear me. When the people of Israel are disturbed about a situation, what do they do? They tear their good clothes. They high priest tore his clothes. The king tore his clothes. They will remove the thing, tear it and turn it to rags. What is that? They are humbling themselves. They are going into repentance mode. They will carry ashes, pour on their head to say, I am nothing but dust and ashes. I am a nobody. They remove all their jewelry. Everything they will remove. Pull them away. That's how they fast. You are fasting, you do makeup. Oh, every, all the pores is covered. Foundation on top, second one, third level, fourth level. You are fasting. That's not how to fast. When you fast, you don't make up. 
I'm just telling you, absolutely, read your Bible. They don't. They don't wear jewelry. They don't do any of those things. To show that I am nothing before you. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. So all objects of pride, you remove them. They remove even the good clothes they have. So when, when, when it comes to praising God, who cares about clothes? It's all about God. They roll on the floor. Then anything you can do to show God that you are excited, he did a great thing, you do it. So you don't look at people and say, people go, they laugh at me. How can I be dancing like that? Now nah, be big man. I, can't, I have to respect myself. Before God, then you will remain small. But if you want to be big, forget about who you think you are. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Acts 16. Another story of how to praise God in the midst of trouble and how God reacts when men from their hearts go into victory dance when they have not seen victory, when they are in captivity. So if there's something that has not changed, learn from this story. Acts 16, 25 to 28. The background story is very simple. Saul was about to go to one of the uh, islands, one of the cities to preach, and the Holy Spirit said no. He tried to go into trust, he said no. He tried, you know, just like that. Then one night as he was praying, he said, Lord, what then do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? He had a dream and somebody was telling him, come and help us from Macedonia. So when they got there, what was the welcome party they received? Thorough beating. As soon as they arrived and did ministry, first preaching they did, beating, heavy one. They wounded them and put them in prison. And lock their hands and their feet, what they call stocks. A stock can be on the wall or on the ground. They lock your hand and you are going to remain like this. If they like, they can keep you there for 20 days, one month, anyhow. It's their choice. You can't sleep, you can't rest. Or the person will lie down on the ground and they will lock the person down. That's what they call a stock. So you can imagine that God said, Go to a place. And then you arrive there. <laughs> the first thing you get is beating. And now you are in that. Will you not complain? Church, will you not complain? Don't be spiritual. Will you not complain? <laughs> you ask, is, are you sure it's God that spoke to me? Could that be the devil? God, how can you do this to me? But hear what the Bible says that he did. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaking at once. And all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all Did you see that? In the midst of all that, supposed to be grumbling and foaming, you go swear like, you know, soup went down sour. Just rise like that. But instead, he prayed with his friend Silas. They just prayed and then went into hymns. Singing and blessing God. In their pain, all their back with bruises. They can't, you know, after a long journey, you should be sleeping, right? But rather than sleep, you are in stocks. With the bruises, nobody has treated the wounds. The pain, the blood flowing. They were still there. You can't sit, you can't stand. I mean, you can't lie down. In that condition, the man was singing. Two of them began to sing and began to praise. And the prisoners were hearing them. God can't stand that kind of praise in that condition. Immediately, the power of God moved. There was an earthquake. The place began to shake. All the chains broke. Everything, they were loose. But he didn't run away. He stayed there. All the prisoners, because of them, were set free. All their chains, everything broke loose. But nobody left. The jailer thought everybody has gone. He wanted to kill himself. Paul said, don't do it. Don't do it. We are all here. Praise God. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, that man and his family got born again. The story changed. But before the story changed, God tested their faith. And they proved.
prove that their faith in God is genuine. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if you can praise God in your condition this morning, these two days remaining, praise God today, praise him in the evening, praise him in the morning, praise him all throughout tomorrow, praise him. As you are going, I just be thanking him and praising God and praising God that for what he has planned for you this year, for what he's going to do for you this year, just be praising God for delivering you from your affliction, for turning your story around. Even though your eyes haven't seen it, your hand haven't touched it yet, praise him like you have experienced it already. And you will experience it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We will not have time to read this psalm. Because of time. But I'm going to ask you to go home. And read it. It's an assignment. Psalm 107. Go home and read it. From verse 1 to 43. Go home and read it. You will see why you need to praise God. It talks about people who went through a lot and they cried to God and God delivered them. That they should give thanks to the Lord for his faithfulness. For the great deliverance. Those who were near death and they called upon the Lord and he healed them of their afflictions. He should give thanks. So if God has ever done something for you, give him praise. Magnify his name. Glorify his name. Hmm? Give thanks to the Lord for what? God is good and his mercy endures forever. Have you experienced the mercy of God? Has God been good to you? Take our time to praise him. Rise to your feet. We will praise him. Can I have the choir please? The worship team? I will need you to help me give us some Israel. Please. Praise, oh, praise, praise, praise. Did you hear? Eh? Re praise. The one that is speaking to God. That we, when I hear the song alone, I want to sing and dance. Uh, not the other ones people used to sing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please. I didn't ask you to ask God anything today. 